Hi Aries, how are you? It's me, Lauren B. Welcome to the Untitled Tarot. I've done your spread this week with a Visconti D Madrone deck. This is a fancy, this is a fancy pants deck. This is the biggest deck that I own. Um, it's gold plated, it's beautiful. It's um, like the original tarot illustrations. Absolutely gorgeous. And I think that there's something really gorgeous about your energy right now, Aries. You've been pulling on me so strongly all morning and yet you feel really quiet. And so I think that you actually might be in very much of like an introspective mode right now, but whether you realize it or not, your energy is really powerful. People are really noticing it. People are really noticing you. Um, it's kind of like you you walk softly, but you carry a big stick, Aries. Your, your energy kind of enters a room before you do. And there's something that's really attractive about it, um, more so than I think you may realize. Now, um, I pulled out some of these some of these cards and, I, and I've been looking at them and it, it's kind of an interesting thing because I think that people see you as much more of a confident authority than you see yourself. Um, and that's really interesting for an Aries because typically like you're really confident, like you are the emperor. And so it's interesting to watch you go through a process that you're a little unsure about to watch you be not so certain about certain truths um figuring it out i don't think a lot of people get to see you kind of figure things out the way you do behind the scenes so i want to pray and then I, let's dip into these cards and and we'll see we'll see what happens yes very good father god thank you for bringing me and my aries in today for this weekly reading I ask that you give me wisdom, clarity, and discernment to deliver these messages accurately for Aries highest of love, light, alignment, and assignment. We praise you. We love you. We thank you always. We give you all the glory and the honor for these messages. To the utmost high, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen, Aries. So, the first card that had come out for you was this Ace of Swords. It's so big. <laughs> it's so big. I can barely keep it in the camera. Was this Ace of Swords. And, you know, I'm just looking at the difference like dimensionally between the size of this sword and your hand and so it's this feeling Aries that you're trying to figure out a truth that's bigger than you this could be the truth about humanity the, a truth about yourself that you haven't quite grasped yet a, a, a truth on spirit how the universe works but there's something about the essence of this truth that it just feels larger than life it, it feels like it's almost not able to be understood by a single person it's just so much bigger than you and you see how there's this ribbon on this card it feels like this should be like a banner like there should be something written or inscribed on it but you can't inscribe it yet until you figure out what it is first it's a truth that's bigger than you a truth that may be too big to even perceive but there's something about it that you're really kind of locked in on it which is why you yourself might be a little bit quiet right now in a little bit of this hermit mode from from Virgo but there's something about your energy that's so attractive that's so powerful that it feels like people are drawn to you in this process of introspectiveness sure um, in this process of trying to figure something out that it almost might feel a little bit like a distraction to you like this is not almost the time where you would want people coming to you for answers when you're still trying to figure out the answer to something that's so magnificent the magician comes out next he looks like he looks a little annoyed actually now that i'm kind of looking at his face it, it's the idea of like you were in the process aries again i'm trying to figure out a truth that feels so much bigger than you but you're still in like a service mode at the same time so again it's like i said people are coming to you um for uh, some kind of service for some kind of service um, and you, the song that you got on the shuffle mancy was young folks. Um, and I'll, I'll link it in the cards. I forget who sings it right now. Um, and so there, there is this idea that part of the thing that you're trying to figure out Aries, it might have to do with this magician energy. It might have to do with manifestation. It might have to do with, um, the human existence, alchemization, how to bring, um, energy into matter, 
right? And there's also the sense of how to get the things that you want, like trying to figure that out. Like how, how do the energetics of manifestation, like how do they really work? Like how does magic actually work? Like how do we, how do we kind of bridge the gap between the spiritual and the physical and like bring things in? And it's, it's very much of this existential like you know I'm one grain of sand in a, in a big beach sort of sort of energy but but also trying to quantify it trying to make sense of it and then meanwhile it's the idea of like trying to work at the same time that might be why you're so focused as well it's like you're trying to be in some kind of service role to your children um maybe you're a teacher maybe you're a reader um maybe you're in the service industry but it's the idea of like all day people are coming to you for things you still have a job to do but in the back of your mind are like all of these really kind of existential questions just like swoop, swoop. so it is a little bit of this the lights are on but like maybe no one's home but no one really realizes it because the the power of your energy is so potent right now perhaps because you're pulling in like so much of this maybe it's just like pure source energy right when you're trying to figure out these larger than life truths of, of existence and, and spirit like the energy that you have to pull in for that is in and of itself larger than life you're going to figure out a truth that's larger than life the energy you have to pull in is larger than life so that's your energy is larger than life which is making your you even more attractive to other people so it's like a bee it's like bees to honey you know what i mean and and while that's wonderful there is something about that that makes you feel perhaps like you wish you had a little bit more time to yourself to reflect and figure out how manifestation works because it almost feels like people are asking you questions that you don't feel confident that you've the answer to because you're still trying to figure it out so it's like trying to teach people things that you haven't fully understood yet and there's something about that that doesn't make you feel very confident again you are the emperor the emperor mixes um like that physical action but also like that that really profound intellect and while you have the the action you you haven't quite quantified like the 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 process yet like the successful steps that one would need to take and so it, it's leaving you feeling even if you look really confident it's leaving you feeling maybe like a little bit out of a source because the eight of pentacles comes out next which is a card of work and so again it's like you're still working like you still have things you're working through this process you're working through these thoughts you also have physical work that you have to do it's this um sense of trying to master your own skills master your own abilities um build upon what you've already built and there are these little flowers in these cards which I think are just really just a joy and a delight but for me they always bring forward like this second little like secret pentacles message and there's four of them on this card and the four of pentacles and you know it talks a lot about um reservations holding on to things holding on to your reserves sometimes it can be scarcity mindset sometimes it can be hoarding but overall it's just an energy of retention so it's the idea of not wanting to backslide, wanting to stay on top of your responsibilities, trying to um, keep a grip on the work that you're doing. Because it's this sense in a way that as your gnosis evolves and as it changes, your work evolves and it changes in the way that you guide people or the way that you teach the younger generation and like people that are coming after like all of that is kind of going to change but it's the idea of I don't want to have like you, like I gonna set all these balls in the air because and all the balls are on the table do you know what I mean so it's this sense of like I don't want all of these balls in the air I don't want everything moving and sh stability feels really important for you right now like safe places um you don't want everything shifting all at once it's like let me just work on this perceptive let me just like try and figure out this one big truth first I want to keep everything else the same the work that I'm doing the way I'm helping other people the way I'm taking care of my kids like the way I'm doing I want to keep all of that the same I want to keep mastering like the skills and the abilities and the gifts that I have as they are I want to hold on to the foundation that I have I want to I want to be able to build upon it or adjust it but I don't want to like have everything kind of go to the wayside it's really interesting but it also feels like some of the the things that people are coming to you with are challenging the way that you work or they're challenging the perceptions that you have it's almost like spirit is I put I don't want to put this spirit is intentionally sending you people that are asking you questions or asking you to do something for them that will require you to pull in these new ideas 
these new revelations, these downloads, like this new information that you have, even if you don't feel ready to share it or integrate it or teach it to anyone else, Spirit's purposefully sending people to you that are going to require you to do it before you feel confident in it, which is, I think, potentially a, a way of them trying to get you like a little bit outside of your comfort zone. And again, there is a big energy of children. So you could have children, you could work with children, but there also is um, the energy of like the next generation. So people that maybe um, are at your job or they work in your industry or field, but maybe they're younger than you. Maybe they don't have as much experience as you and they may be coming to you like, hey, how did you get to where you are? And you trying to quantify that process. Like when did this seed that I had in my head, how, what were the steps that I took that allowed it to grow into what it is now? How did that happen? And what were the spiritual truths? What were the spiritual laws that um, like supported the physical action that I took? Like it's almost like trying to go back in time and remember the steps that you took, but not really being able to. And so it, again, it's like it's this really interesting energy. It's like very simple in a sense. People are like Aries, like your energy is really attractive. Like your energy is really powerful. Like you look really well established. Like how did you do it? I want to do what you did. How did you do it? And you kind of going a little bit blank going, I'm not really sure how I did it. Right. I was like, and then having to kind of dissect the process and then connect it with the spiritual truths that got you there, but also the new spiritual truths that now you're being expanded in. And so it's the idea of, I could probably explain to you the steps that I took to get here, but I don't, I think that there might be better steps. Like if I could go back and do it again with the, with what I know now, I might've done it a little bit differently and like really trying to make sense of that before you express it to other people. But again, there are people coming to you that are, are being guided to ask you these kind of thought provoking questions that might uh, require you to step out of that comfort zone and share information um, or a strategy or a procedure or steps that you took that you may not feel super confident in sharing yet. I don't know if this makes sense but now we have the queen of swords coming out next and again here is like another youngin coming up to you and the thing that was so interesting is that now they have a giant sword that looks totally like improportional to them and so again it's like seeing in a younger generation seeing in your children them asking very advanced questions um them trying to explore truths that are bigger than them the same way that you are. And almost there's, there's like a funny thing. It's like, you always want your kids to be smarter than you are. You always want the next generation or, you know, the class that comes up under you. You always want them to be better, at least you hope that you would want them to be better than you, like smarter than you, more efficient than you, more clever than you. But it's like almost this weird thing of like when you actually get faced with it, it's like a little bit surprising. It's like, you're asking that question? Well, I'm still trying to figure out that question for myself. But there's an interesting thing that sometimes we don't know how we feel about something. We don't know what we understand until someone else asks us. I can't tell you how many times Aries that like, I never thought about the opinion that I had on a certain thing until someone asked me. And then all of a sudden I went, huh, well, yeah, I think that maybe blah, 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 blah. And next thing I knew, I'm like, wow, I didn't know that's what, how I felt about that. I didn't know that I knew that. I, oh, some, so sometimes there's something about, we understand ourselves better. We can, uh, discern what our belief systems are, what are our personal truths in the greater scheme of the all truths um, when other people ask us. And so while it may be like a little bit intimidating or a little bit, even like, a little bit annoying, like a little bit, um, there's actually something that these these people, these, these kids, these younger generations, people coming up after you, they're actually helping you just as much as you may be helping them because they're helping you figure out your own personal truths um, because they're asking questions that you may not have asked yourself before. And that is really going to help you understand not just your truth, but how your truth connects to this truth that is bigger than yourself. Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. Because the five of swords comes up next, which is typically um, like a card of confusion of like mental conflict. And it falls right underneath this magician. And so again, there is something of uh, not really understanding maybe even how you got to where you are. Or, or again, what spiritual laws played into it or not being able to remember the steps that you took and if 
And, and, and there's also a thing about even if you were to remember every single step that you took that got you where you were, would those be the steps that you would um, advise someone else to take? Because they might not, right? It's the idea of, well, I made a lot of mistakes. Like I did, you know, I took a couple funny turns um, and I got to where I'm supposed to be, but I don't know if I would, I, if I would advise anyone else to take the route that I took, right? Because you, you want people to have a, an easier experience than, than what you did. Um, and so it's like, how would I manifest this for someone else, but do it in a way that causes them less friction or is easier for them? Or it's it's very much of that kind of thing. Now, the thing with this Five of Swords that I think is so beautiful, and it's one of the reasons that I love this deck, is that here's the one here's the one sword, your sword of truth, right in the middle, right? And how your sword of truth, like your percept, your reality, how other people's realities, other truths, other belief systems, other philosophies, how they come in, and they will consistently cross your own knowing, your own gnosis. But with these four little diamonds, just like these four little flowers, it's the idea of needing to be able to, and maybe this is part of the advice that you're giving people, or maybe this is a piece of advice for yourself that's kind of coming through, that's being illuminated through other people asking you questions, is that as other people's needs, other people's questions, other people's truths, philosophies, the ways in which the world is working, right? Like all of that comes in and crosses your own truth. That the most important thing is to stay true, stay true to your heart. You must be true to your heart. Like you have to, you have to stay true to your personal truth, that your personal truth may not be um, an absolute truth, right? And what works for you may not work for other people. And sometimes, um, even though we like to be an example to other people, our journeys aren't always the example that we want people to take, right? It's more of them, us wanting them to take the wisdoms of the lessons that we've learned and less of the experience of the lessons that we learned. I don't know if that makes sense, but I noticed that as your truth um, crosses other people's truths, there is a point of like net zero here in the middle. And so it's the idea of part of what you are understanding uh, or part of what maybe you are trying to impart to others is that regardless of which truth someone is operating in at any point in time, that it all comes back down to net zero. It all comes back down to one absolute truth. And maybe that one absolute truth is something that no one will ever understand. Maybe it's just that we are all one. We are all connected right? Like it could just be something as simple as that, or it could be something that's much more complicated, but it might be the answer is that this net zero point, the one absolute truth that governs all is the one truth that no one will ever find out. But there, it's something in that. And the only thing that really matters is the direction that you take. Cause then these, these swords kind of open up and feel a little bit like a road. And which then kind of, I feel like makes you go back and say, you know, I wouldn't advise anyone else to take the steps that I took, but had I not taken those steps that I took, it wouldn't have got me here. So if you have to go in a funny direction, if you have to do something either way, as long as you hold on to your personal truth, you'll always end up in like the same place. You'll always end up kind of like where you're supposed to be. And there's something about that that is like, it seems very obvious. But in a world when we're always trying to figure out like every little thing, right? Especially if it comes to this magician energy, um, spiritual laws and, and magic and alchemy and manifestation. Like there's always a formula. It's like light a candle, tap your foot three times, throw a penny over your shoulder and blink twice and your manifest manifestation will be here. When sometimes like you don't need to be doing all of that, right? And so it seems like very obvious advice and it might be something for you that you're like, oh, that's like really obvious. Like why didn't I? think of that like but again sometimes we don't know like how we feel about something or sometimes we don't even understand our own personal truths our own personal opinions until um other people ask us because again they might not be questions that we readily ask ourselves but at the end of the spread i see you falling into this queen of wands underneath this eight of pentacles which is saying that you know by kind of through the end of this process is that you're actually feeling a lot more confident in the work that you're doing it, you know in the beginning you might even be second guessing like your work that you're doing 
um, or the advice that you're giving other people. Like, I don't really know if I'm qualified to be giving this kind of advice to be to be teaching other people something that I'm still trying to understand for myself. But by the end of it, it's the idea of feeling like you're actually doing a really good job. I actually am kind of getting a handle on this. Wait, maybe I actually am teaching my kids the right way. Maybe I actually am giving good advice to, to the younger generation, to the younger people at my job, the people coming up behind me. Like maybe I'm actually doing all right. And I just see you like feeling really confident in the work that you were doing. And I feel like this confidence, if anything, it reinforces the work that you were doing before. And so now it feels like the confidence level that you have actually matches the perception of how confident other people think you are. So now it's actually really in sync. And the last card that you have was this King of Swords, which I think is you feeling like really empowered. And it's also the King of Swords for me is like a really ju judicial kind of energy. It's like not only just feeling confident in yourself and the work that you're doing, but also feeling really confident in your ability to dis to be good counsel, to dispense good advice, to not like second guess or worry if I'm leading someone down the wrong way or if I'm teaching them something that like isn't right. Or there's like there's something about that that you're not only just um, you're think Lauren that you're not just um, more confident in the work that you're doing but you're also more confident in the ways in which you are teaching guiding um advising and leading others around you so it's like everyone really wins so it's like it's really cool and, and i feel like the energy this week collectively is like taking the long way around to get to like a very simple kind of truth but you know sometimes you got to take the scenic route aries what you gonna do so this is what I have for you. I really hope that this was helpful for you. I really do. I'm going to keep pulling a few cards and do an extended reading for you. If you're interested in your extended reading, I will link the Vimeo um, down below. I'll also link your September monthly reading um, down below as well. If you're interested in all of the extendeds or all of the monthly readings, Patreon's down there as well with all of my information for personal readings, my email, social media, all that good stuff. And until I see you next time, Aries. Keep plugging away. You're doing a really good job. I love you very much and take care of yourself until next time. Goodbye.